So again, can the people try to kind of come around? I, I do my best to get cut um, to make sure people can see, but just in case, try to like call people in the back. So like I said, what I want to do is just focus on the skull because I think the rest of it you could pretty much do okay with especially external anatomy, except for the fact that we don't seem to have any boys, which is kind of upsetting. I talked to the company. Um, equal representation is needed here. Um, so I'm going to start with the chondrocranium. And um, I didn't draw this on my diagram, but this, this is a chondrocranium, that, and it has in a shark this big thing that sticks out at the front end of it anteriorly, and that would be the... Rostra. Rostra. Good thing to label on any clips. We like that. Everyone likes the rostrum. Um, so that's not kind of a standard thing. It's something that's kind of specific to sharks, which is why I didn't draw it. So that's the rostrum. You can see on either side where my fingers are, where the eye sits. What do we call that? Orbits. Orbits. Okay. And then at the very back end of the skull, surrounding the big hole where the spinal cord leaves, what's that hole called? The foramen magnum. The foramen magnum. That region around the foramen magnum we call the occipital. occipital region. Okay, and that's where I drew that occipital arch. The arch would be the part of the skull arching over the foramen magnum. Right. Okay. Um, oh, there it is, foramen magnum. These two bumps at the back end of the skull on either side of the foramen magnum would be the condyles. occipital condyles, and those articulate with the vertebrae. Can someone do me a big favor who can actually see the clock and tell me when I've got about five minutes left? Because I can't quite see it. Oh, there we go. That's a brilliant idea. Mm -hmm. you want to just lay that down there? If you don't mind. And I will kind of just go. Then it you moves. can just click the button. Okay, perfect. Um, okay, so. Then we have the capsules. Um, at the front end here would be where the nose used to sit, right in there, and those would be what? Nasal, nasal, oh, capsule. nasal capsule, and the opening into that is the narrix. Then at the back end here where the inner ear sits is another capsule, and that would be the? Otic capsule. Otic capsule, exactly, right in there. Is everyone seeing okay? Yeah. All right. Um, up on the top of the skull, there's an indentation, which our book is calling the parietal fossa, but the other lab guy with the colorful pictures seems to be calling the endolymphatic fossa, this pit on the top of the skull. So just to point that out, okay, I'm just going down my list. Um, this is where then we discover that some of the holes are filled in on the one with wax. So I switch over to one that doesn't have wax, where we have actual holes. We look into the parietal fossa. You can see there's two foramina, one smaller one anterior, anteriorly and laterally there. And that's called the endolymphatic foramen. Okay. You see that? Okay. And the inner ear is full of a fluid called endolymph. And there's actually a tube that comes in the shark, that is. There's a tube that comes out of the inner ear, runs all the way up to the surface of the shark and opens up to the surface as a little pore. And when you looked at the outside of your shark, you may re remember something called an endolymphatic pore mm -hmm. on the top of the head. That's actually where seawater can communicate with the inner ear, and they bring sand grains in to build their otoliths, which are the ear stones in their inner ear. It's crazy. But anyway, that's what's running through that hole is the little duct coming from the endolymphatic frame into the inner ear. Then behind that is a much bigger hole, and that's the perilymphatic foramen. And that connects to the perilymph, which is the fluid that surrounds the inner ear. And there's the films in the inner ear. Can we see that okay? Um, um, thank you, that's actually very helpful. Um, audit capsules are here, and if we look at the audit capsules, you can see ridges that reflect the semicircular canals, which are spaces, and the ducts, which are part of the inner ear that runs through those spaces in the underlying inner ear. And in particular, you can see one on the lateral side of the audit capsule. That's the lateral semicircular canal and duct there. That's reflected. 
ducts yet. And then dorsally, you can see the posterior semicircular duct bulging out, or canal bulging out there and there on either side. And then the anterior is a little harder to see, but it runs kind of like that, and it tends to get lost in these preparations under some other bumps and not really show up very well, but it's kind of right in there. And later in the semester, we're going to shave away the contracranium and expose the inner ear in about a week. Um, okay. There are some holes at the back end of the skull where cranial nerves leave. And the one on either side of the foramen magnum here is the vagus foramen. Okay. Right there. And then just a little more lateral to that, oops, that shows up better on this side, right here is the glossopharyngeal foramen. That's the glossopharyngeal nerve goes through there, the vagus nerve goes through the vagal foramen. Um, basal plate is this area right in here on the ventral side of the skull. And you can see the notochord running up forward through there, making a bulge. Okay, and it kind of runs forward and stops right about there. So that's the basal plate, this whole area. There's a hole right in the middle of the basal plate right there. And that, anyone remember this one? Carotid. That's the carotid foramen. So that's where the internal carotid artery goes into the skull. And it's cool. It's moving right along. Okay, optic region, that's kind of boring, it's just where the eye is. Um, in front of where the eye is, there's an antorbital process that sticks out. Ant meaning in front of, orbital, orbit, so antorbital process. And a process in general is just anything that kind of bulges out, it's called a process. Okay, so that's the antorbital process. Um, there's a superorbital crest that runs along behind that. And then that connects to the post-orbital process back here. So anatomist, every little bump has to get its own name. That's just how it goes. It's useful that way we can talk about these things. So anterorbital, post-orbital process. If we flip the skull over and look on the ventral side in front of the basal plate, you can see a big bump on either side here, and that's the basi trabecular process. This is the trabecular region of the skull, and at the base of it is the basi trabecular process. Here. Okay. Um, and that turns out to be really important. We'll come back to that again and again because it's the place where the jaws articulate with the chondrocranium. Um, okay. Epiphyseal foramen um, would be up on the top. There's a little hole right here, and the epiphysis, which is the Pineal eye, the third eye, sticks up through there. So that's the epiphyseal foramen. Almost five minutes. Okay. Um, there's a whole series of holes that run along right above the orbit, and those are the superficial ophthalmic foramen, all along in here. And it's really a mouthful, but there's a nerve, the superficial ophthalmic nerve, that runs along the top of the orbit. It has lots of branches that go up through those holes, and they're going to supply the lateral line system right above the orbit there. Um, there's a nice big one, the optic foramen. Okay, we like that. Right there, that's the optic nerve from the eye going back to the brain through that nice big hole. I didn't quite give you all the foramen to do, but I did that. And then this one at the back, the trigeminofacial foramen, which is the trigeminal and facial nerve that runs through that. This. Okay. Um, optic pedicle, miraculously. Who was it who gave me this one? Thanks, Joe. Um, this happens to have preserved the optic pedicle in the orbit there, usually it's lost on these dry perforations. But it's a little structure that holds the eyeball up, basically. Mm -hmm. okay. see it there. Um, and we'll see it when we do the dissection. It's very obvious in the dissection. It's not very good on these preps. And then we have the nasal region, nasal capsules we looked at already, rostrum we looked at already, um, naris, 
we don't really get to see it because the nasal capsules are all broken up. Um, the pre-cerebral cavity is this space right in here in front of the brain, and the pre-cerebral fenestra, fenestra is a window, as opposed to the brain, which is a hole. Pre-cerebral fenestra is just this opening into the brain cavity where the brain is. And rostral fenestrae then are located ventrally, and there are these openings here. Nothing runs through them, they're just there. So that's the entire chondrocrania, which leaves me like three minutes to do <laughs> the splanchocrania. That's okay. I do need to put on a go into that. We really want it. This is the chondrocranium with the splanchocranium present. And the splanchocranium, I can kind of pull it out so you can see it here. Okay, this is all splanchocranium. There's a series of arches that make up the splanchocranium. The first arch, the mandibular arch, consists of the palatal quadrate cartilage above, making the upper jaw, that's here, and the mandibular cartilage below, making the lower jaw. Behind that, we have the hyoid arch. The hyoid arch consists of a hyomandibula, which is here, and that's the dorsal element. Okay. And then, a little harder to see, but back down under here is the serratohyle and then the basihyle. You guys see that okay? Okay, so here's serratohyle and basihyle. Serratohyle and basihyle. Okay. And then we've done the first arch, mandibular arch, second arch, hyoid arch. Behind that, we have the whole series of branchial arches, and there's five of them. One, two, three, four, five. And if we look at those, we can start up at the top end, and you'll see a little cartilage element that's kind of angling back like that there. It's right like that. That's the pharyngobranchial right there. John? Mm -hmm. It's two minutes till 2.50. Yeah, we're good. Oh. We're just about done. Oh, you that's the pharyngobranchial. But thanks for the warning. Yeah. <laughs> that's the pharyngobranchial. Then... Here is the epibranchial. This is the next element right here, like that. And then there's the bend around to the ventral side. So to see the, the other elements, I have to flip this over. And what we can see then is here, a serratobranchial coming down like this. So the serratobranchial, okay. um, right there, and then there's a series of hypobranchials. There's not as many hypobranchials as there are arches, but you can see several of them in there. Those are the hypobranchials. Okay, hypobranchials. And then right in the midline here are the basobranchials. And this is, they're, they're also reduced. There's not five of them, but you can see one here. You guys see that? Okay, oops, right there. It's a basobranchial. So those elements form an arch around the gut. So this is all pharynx in there, mm -hmm. and they're arching around, which is why they're called a visceral arch or a brachial arch. See how it does that? And I think I'm about out of time, so we'll stop there. But do you see that? Okay, good? Was that helpful? Yeah, all right.